Fad, and Wale requires a Kwanyam Nawa, Wash Yakim Nawa. That's the belongings to our apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Salawam, Wabba Rakim, Wabba Kwanyam, and Salawam, and that's peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Once again, you're looking at the true prophets of Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai coming week in and week out to give you the truth according to the Bible, talking about the downfall of America, which is Babylon the Great in the Holy Scriptures. We're also preaching that our Lord and Savior Yahweh Shah is returning very soon to deliver his elect. But one third out of the, out of the nation of Israel, and also the elect scattered throughout the entire globe. And jump into 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 1, verse 16. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, Thank and you. the dead in Yahweh shall rise first. Sorry, read up a little bit. Okay. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 14. For if we believe that Yahweh Shah died and rose again, even so, them also would sleep. And Yahweh Shah will, Yahweh will bring with them. Right, so we have to make that. That's good. You don't need this. Okay. That is the fact that right now we have the opportunity to receive salvation. A lot of salvation. love. Yeah. We have to remember. You need a break? You need a break? No, no. And I know that that's a phrase I'm going to switch them out. But it's a phrase that's very, very true. Tomorrow is not promised. As a matter of fact, us leaving from Kent to the moon safety is not even promised. This scripture right now is Proverbs chapter 27 verse 1. Boast not thyself on tomorrow. Thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Boast not yourself of tomorrow. There's a reason why the scriptures the Lord's prayer in the book of Matthew says, Give us this day our daily bread. Talking about today. Oh Lord, Mother Prashad, give us our bread today. You're not praying for next week and next month. We don't know if you'll be here next week or next month. Now we tie all these things in to say, once again, that you're living right now. You're watching this video right now. So right now is the time for you to see the video. Amen. We got Mr. James' son, LeBron's son, just in the ER a few days ago because he had a heart attack or something crazy like that. He was young, in his 20s. in his 20s, catching a heart attack. Now who knows when the next one is going to happen with that dude. Now, I'm not bringing it out to make an example out of him, but I'm saying is that we got family, friends, dying each and every single week. Brothers, we only in our 30s, 20s, some of us, 40s. People we knew from high school passing away. But the Lord still got us out here living. So that means we got to put in work right now when we have the opportunity. Don't, don't boast in tomorrow. Don't say tomorrow, I'm going to do work. The next day, or when the prophecies start kicking a little bit harder, then I'm going to come in. How are you waiting too long? What? Right. So Rock 5 and 7, make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not all from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish in the day of vengeance. Right, so it says, in thy security thou shalt be destroyed, and perish, it says. When something perishes, it's gone. I mean, that's kind of beautifully worded, but I mean, take that for what it's saying. God is going to be saying that some people are going to perish, that some people are gone, all because they didn't believe in him, all because their mindset was wrong, all because your mindset was wrong. Like, you got to understand, people that think that it's okay to eat pork, they're going to actually die because of that shit. You'll die because you couldn't stop eating pork, because you couldn't stop eating shrimp, because lobster just tastes too good. You dipping it in that buttery ass sauce, giving yourself a heart attack. You're gonna die because of your mentality. But you heard the word. You drove by every week, like my man. You saw the prophet. You had an opportunity to receive salvation, but you wasted. Better read it one more time, bro. So rock five and seven. Make no turn to turn to the Lord. And put not all from day to day, 
But certainly should have wrapped the door come forth. Like some of y'all, y'all know what the truth of the Bible is talking about. Y'all know that Farago is talking about the CHIP. It's out here, it's obvious. But y'all don't want to tell it. Because then you gotta come under the tutelage of GMS. Oh, if we say that it's actually the, the CHIP now, we're saying that they were right the whole time, which means we were wrong. You can't <coughs> pride. Uh, what? Yeah, like the girl said, y'all just can't be humble. It's not even about it's not even about really being humble. It's just about the truth. Push what's right while you have the time. Yahweh Shai said that every single word that's coming out of your goddamn mouth, you're gonna to have to be accounted for. It. But remember, these things start first with thoughts. Your mind. You see, Yahweh Shai died so that our mind could be purged from these dead works, from pride, from lusting after the ways of the, the, the heathen, the devil, the other nations. But you couldn't get over that. You didn't realize really why Yahweh Shai died. Sirach 5 and 7. Make no turn to turn to the Lord and put not all from day to day. For it suddenly should have wrapped the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou should be destroyed and perish in a day of vengeance. Right now, I'm glad he brought this out because it's showing the dynamic between these two scriptures right here. Sirach 5 and 7 is about five Sirach 5 and 7 is outlining a man that didn't believe in the Lord, that didn't trust, huh? that Let procrastinated you know. as they love to do. Every single day got here procrastinated. Then I procrastinate with a few things. But I know when it comes to the work of the Lord, I'm going to work with that. You got to be. You got to hold yourself accountable. Nobody's you holding your hand. It's like through school. You go through four years, you don't really got nobody holding your hand throughout those four years of college. You don't do the study. You don't do the life that You don't do the life that more than the class that you want. And so on and so forth. So that's the man right here who didn't do these things. He procrastinated. He died. He died uh, probably a miserable death. Now, we jump to the first and the the fourth chapter. Now we're picking up in the chapter where you had a man that didn't procrastinate. Somebody who asked for the legal report. And he did what he could for the body while he had the opportunity to do so. And he had a great reward coming for him, right? And in fact, security thou should be stored in the church of the adventure. First Thessalonians 4 and 14. For if we believe that Yahweh Shah died and rose again, even so them also would sleep in Yahweh Shah. Will Yahweh bring with them? Right, since he will bring these people with him that died in the truth. That thing about they died in the Lord. And then they died believing in him, having faith in him all the way to that last breath. Very, very important because like you said, starting off camp, you don't know when your last breath is going to be. Just because you've been pushing for five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years, it don't mean you're about to be out there next week. A lot of y'all been listening for three, four, five years. You don't know if you're going to be able to hear us next week. Not because of us, because of you. You don't know what the Lord got in store for you. A lot of y'all procrastinating and thinking that at the last second, your faith is going to just skyrocket and be on the same level as someone who's been coming out for you. It don't work like that. Each and every single one of us took baby steps. We said crawling first. You gotta crawl before you can walk. Then you start walking. Then you start jogging. Then you can learn to sprint later. It's the process though. Keep reading the baby. Uh, first Thessalonians 4 and 15. For this, for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that which we are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord should not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout. Meaning, we're not gonna prevent them. Meaning, just because we're alive and they pass on to the spiritual world, it doesn't mean that all of a sudden our reward is gonna be different. No, you even strove for the kingdom of heaven or you did it, point blank period. We're all working for that same exact penny. Just because that person went to the spiritual world before you, it don't mean that you touch your living. It's not going to that penny. That brother put in some work too. So what you think you're going to get a, a greater reward? Nah, it don't work like that. We're all looking to be joint heirs with Yahweh Shai. And that's a precept that can be motivated. He 
keeps me on fire. Knowing that we're going to be joint heirs with someone who's greater than you, the Lord. You got to work hard for that. Is that true? For the first testimony 4 and 16. For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of Yahweh. And the dead in Yahweh shot should rise first. Right, so the dead in Yahweh shot. That's what it seems like now. Yeah, exactly. The dead in Yahweh shot shall rise first. Meaning they're going to be the first ones to come back in a chariot with Yahweh shot. That's a blessing right there. That's, a That's why the scripture says you can find them. I'll just quote it from the Wikipedia by the scripture. But, that's what they call it. Okay, let's just grab that. Because that's the case with Yahweh Bosh and Yahweh Shai. You do the work, you believe in him, you trust him unto the very last breath. He's going to be very, very, uh, we're not impressed, but he'll be proud of you. That's what you want. You just want your father to be good. When, you're a, when you were a child, you were playing sports, you did good in this sport, you made a touchdown, made a shot, whatever. You know, you're like you know, 10, 11, 12 years old. You look at the crowd like, oh, did y'all see? It's the same way. We just want to make our father proud. See? And you do that by putting in work and believing in it. You're doing exactly what it's real for us. Right? Yep. The book of uh, Psalms and the volume, chapter 1. So it says, Father gave you that knowledge, and that's when that contract was established. Then all you did, as soon as you made that vow, when the Spirit gave you this knowledge, you basically signed your the name of God of mine when you came out to camp now. Now you signed the contract. And you gotta keep pushing now. So go ahead. Yes. Verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord Yahweh is the the death of his saints. Right, now you look at that word precious. I forgot what it is in Hebrew, but it means valuable. You can't see you know, it. It means valuable. It the definition. So precious, valuable, very important. In the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And no Christian, you can't say that saints are anybody that believes in God. If you're going to use that, give me a precept first. Give me a precept and show me that saints are anybody that believes. We're all Christians. But that's not the case. A saint is somebody that made a contract with the Heavenly Father. The only people that made that contract or that covenant are the Israelites. So that's what the saints are talking about. What's that word? The word that for precious is before. Before. Before valuable, pride. Weighty and precious and rare. There it is. Splendid. Weighty and divine. How heavy and great. Because you don't know what tomorrow will promise. 
once had a friend in middle school, high school, passed away in a car accident. Now you think about it, these dudes, they probably never heard of the knowledge that we had. Never had an opportunity, but we do. We have it. So no matter what, we gotta remember, look, your hollow shot died. We have the knowledge, we already got the victory, so keep going. Let's get back to what this moment. First Thessalonians 4 and 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called to gather with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Right, so those that died in Yahweh died, they died in the faith. Are going to be already in the chariots when the Lord comes back. Then it says we that are alive and remain are going to be caught up with them. What does that mean? That means that the so-called UFOs, you know, how they have those... Uh, He's in love, man. Mean, what's going on, brother? Yeah, you know how we have the so-called beam that comes down. That's what that's talking about. You're going to be caught up in the chariot with those that already died in your house died. They're already going to have that glory. That's the new body. And that's what's going to happen. That new covenant. A perfect body. Perfect vessel inside that he wanted to, but he chose you. You have to remember that and think more highly of yourself. I mean, understand there's a difference between being modest and humble and then versus being weak. You walk around with your head lowly does not mean that you're in a meek mentality. <laughs> now, it's different if you're, of course, maybe Not fair. So he chose certain people and he didn't choose other people. 
the fact that you know that means that you understand that darkness. So you're chosen. Oh, what is that? Uh, Second as is nine and eleven. And they that have loathed my law, while they had yet liberty, liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was opened unto them. Right, so liberty was open, meaning they had the opportunity to receive salvation by gaining this knowledge. But like we always say, take the rest. That's what happened. Liberty was open. And for God but that means that Yahweh Shai died and he rose again. That allowed us that mercy, this great spirit that we have. A lot of people know that, this, that that great spirit is going to be open forever. The Lord ain't going to come back in my lifetime. That's what they think. Yeah, we'll be gone by the time that happens. Right. My kids got to worry about that. God, they, in your lifetime, right now, that when these things are going to start to manifest. And they already are if you have a spiritual life. Not large to the time it should be. Uh, second Acts 9 and 11, and they that have my law while they had yet liberty, and when they yet place of repentance was opened unto them, understood not, but despised it. The same must know it after death by pain. The same must I can't eat for That's what that means. They despise it. What's your word? It tastes good for a reason. What you mean? I gotta give up strength. The easy shit that makes me feel like God. You don't die for that strength, sort of buddy. Yeah, it says, and it, it says, it says, uh, and it's not grievous. That scripture says it's not grievous. Yeah. And so yeah. if it's not grievous to you, you'll be good. Right. You know, but if it is grievous to you, you'll be grievous later. Right. You've got the work to do. Right. And you got people, listen, there's an alternative. Now that we're talking about it, look, you got, uh, Pork bacon, and turkey. Same thing with hot dogs. You ain't got to buy the pork. You got chicken hot dogs, beef hot dogs, which tastes better. Like real shit. The beef hot dogs taste better. Way better. And bacon. bacon. Yeah. You got beef ribs. You know? But y'all just can't give it up. That's all it is. It's that, it's that fleshly lust that y'all just don't want to overcome. It's just too hard. But you want to die for like a stupid thing. Now, I love this scripture. It gives a balance now. Oh, since you like chorizo so much, the pork, you can just replace it with vegan or, or chicken. I don't even do vegan, just chicken or beef. Yeah, chicken yeah. and vegan. Yeah. 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 Ye
lot of y'all doing it because you're thinking about the punishment of the two thirds. How about you think about the reward of the elect? Have your mind on that. And it's really simple, right? When you begin a sport, like you don't think um, what's going to happen if you lose the game. What's going to happen if you are all of a sudden they score and you're down so 20? Think about that shit. No, your goal is to be up to one. Your goal is to win that. You're not thinking about what's going to come after It's the same thing. I'm not in this ministry to fucking lose. No one, no brother up here is up here to lose. Right. We all believe that Yahweh Shai got that victory. It's written in stone, baby. It's done. It's over with. All it's we have to do is endure and just pray that we're part of that number. Read that one more time. It's the last verse. Second yeah, Ezra 9 and 13. And therefore be so not curious how the ungodly should be punished. Right, because that's not a winner's mentality. A winner is not worried about how they're going to lose. They're just not thinking about that. Yeah. You know, people yeah, wonder why Muhammad Ali was so great because he told you what he was going to knock you out. He said it, look, eighth round, that nigga's going down. And he did it. He put it out there, he believed it. No, we're not jumping into the whole law of attraction type shit. But on a smaller degree, oh, it? it's seven true. One? Yeah. If you believe something, but you're going to become that character. Oh, read it. Oh, no, I'm asking. Proverbs 20, 27. He's talking about that. It's something that I did from a young age and I did it. So I know it works. But if you want to become something, if you want to become a certain person, you have to put your mind in the place of how that person acts and what they think, and then you become just that over here. Oh, okay. Mine too. Oh, mine? Mine, oh, mine? mine? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. It's good. Good. Can I get proper? Yeah, I don't see nothing saying overheat. Yes, Some of those still good? Yeah, those are good. Yeah, Will they say overheating yeah, on it? Or, you good? No, as long as you can see the video, it's good. Okay. Yeah. Proverbs 23 and 7, and it says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's what I wanted, so I'm glad you said that. As you think in your heart, so are you, right? If you tell yourself, like, as an example, right? If you say, I want to be a great orator. I want to speak well. Well, now all of a sudden, you're going to do those things that great orators do, right? And I hate doing it, but hey, it's just true. The nigga of Barack Obama, come on, he speaks well, we all know. But what's one thing that he does all the time when he speaks? I'll give you a hint. That's the hint. He pauses. He pauses. And it allows him time to think. He's digesting his own words, right? So when you do that, all of a sudden, you're projecting the person that you want to be. What's the point here? We have to project salvation. You yes. have to think about You have to think about salvation and put it in your mind. And that's what the Bible says. Need that. <laughs> therefore, are put on as the elect. You see? That's how we're coming full circle with this. You kept mentioning comments about your mind. And where your mind has to the body falls. So this is a mental uh, battle and that re that's resonant in the spirit. This is Sirach 39, verse 1. But he that giveth his mind to the law of the Most High and is occupied in the meditation thereof will seek out the wisdom of all the ancient and be occupied in prophecies. You see, so that's what your mind should be. You over here worrying about how to lose is going to lose. But your mind should be worried about what the winners are going to get when they win. And if you're doing that right now, that means your mind is occupied in the Bible and what it says is going to come very, very soon, might I add. We ain't got time to be worried about losing. We're supposed to have a kingly or priestly mentality, I should say. And if that's the case, if you're a king, well, put on. Act like a king. Act like one. Be one. Be one right now. You see, we're building up. Like we're building up spiritually, you know, the tabernacle of faith. Well, if that's the case, we're moving. Those are actually kings. Those were kings. Those were very, uh, what do you call it? Men that were held down men. So, yeah, exactly. We got to do that right now. We're just practicing. We're not going to get things perfect. The Lord is going to make all that happen when we come to the Is that wrong? Yeah, you said renowned men. This is verse 2. 
he will keep the sayings of the renowned men. And where subtle parables are, he will be there also. Right, he'll be there also. Even what? Looking around the body of Kabbalah and Yahweh. That's where those renowned men are, even right now. That's what the body is going right now, thinking about Yahweh Shai. When he returns, right, going through the, uh, the what is it called, rehearsing the righteous acts, all for the purpose of letting the Lord know, look, we believe in you, we have faith in you. Have mercy on me, you see what I'm doing to you. Right, nothing is wrong with having that kind of a mentality if it's still humble. Oh Lord, you see what I'm doing for you, please look out for me. I'm out there doing the work, have mercy on me, uh, my woman, my children, whoever, right? Because you did what you're supposed to do, all of a sudden he has mercy on you, your family, your household, but you get yourself in order first. Colossians chapter 3 and 12, put on therefore as the elect of the most high, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humble and kind, that's how you put on Basically, that's what it is. Right kindness, meekness, self-control, patience, temperance. You put on those things. That's really how you rehearse the right thing. Because when you do those things, and naturally, you'll keep them on. That's how these things work. That's how it works. Right? Showing love to one another, your fellow brother. Naturally, all of a sudden, you're going to find yourself keeping the law. Because so, none of us remember all that for the 613th. It's not going to remember. It's not going to work like that. But the Lord, you want to learn your efforts. You want to see your striving. Like striving to be yeah, under death. Gotcha. And it says what the Lord shall fight for. There's nothing to worry about. Okay, now, preach that. No, it was, uh, I want to bring up that word of command. Uh, oh, no, that was a That word of command. 16. That's what it's all about. And what that does, 
is it allows your walk and this ministry just to be a little bit more smooth. That's the whole point. But at the same time, it's building you up. These are attributes and situations, experiences that you can give to another man. Now, all of a sudden, you're coming into that priestly mindset. Now you're stepping into the There's always a person, there's always a final destination that we should be looking for. Something that being that man that Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai has destined for us to actually be. You want to be that person, it just takes time. It takes time, it takes diligence. But what helps out is looking at these characteristics. Okay. Not what I want to do is jump back and I know you have issues with that. Let's read that. This is Psalm 68 and 20. He that is our power is the power of salvation. Right. And unto the Most High, Yahweh, belong the issues from death. So there's two reasons why we're bringing that out. I love precepts like that. It shows the balance within that one phrase. Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai is who is responsible and control of salvation. What does that mean? Officially being delivered. That's what it means on this side. Because you do have forms of salvation. You go to court, something happens, and you get off, whatever. That's salvation right there for that moment. You've been delivered from whatever time. You are like out for you. You just look for that final delivery when the house guy returns and cracks those clouds. And that belongs to him. And how about you, Yahweh Shai? At the same time, the issues of death belong to Yahweh Bash and Yahweh Shai. Now in business, you have something, a phrase, where they say, just control your controller. Because you can't worry about what your, uh, what your competitor is doing. Like when you make a risk analysis, look, you can't worry about what they're doing. But you can know it, but you just work on your strengths. Right, so you control your controller. The issues of death belong to the Lord. What the fuck I gotta be worrying about death for? No, I'm gonna leave that to him. That's, you got that, old Lord. But he told me to just worry about how the righteous are going to be saved. Now let's read this one precept and I'm going to jump over. I got you. Okay. Last verse. Second Ezra 8 and 61. And therefore is my judgment now in hand. No, no, I'm talking the last verse that we left off. And, and nine, I'm sorry. Second. Uh, Second Ezra 8 and 13. Ungodly should be punished and win, but inquire how righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. That's it. And finish it off by saying, whose the world is, and the world is created. Meaning the elect. Now, of course, the entire nation of Israel is going to be the mothers and the dainties and beautiful things of this earth. Absolutely. But, of course, the elect are going to be on a different table with different quote unquote tax bracket. There will be levels in the kingdom of heaven, just like there is right now. Esau's on top, a little bit. The Edomites, of course, then you have those Edomites that are up there. Right? And so on and so forth. We're looking for to be on the very top. We're looking to think about something and we're not worried about death. We're not really worried about those Turn. That's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse 23. Oh, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. That's it right there. Because you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know about your tomorrow. You don't know about your next few hours. Shit. And the way these cardiac arrests are happening, you don't know about your next step. Anything could happen. That's in the hands of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So, what do you do though? Like, what's the answer? You pray for mercy. That's it. That's it. You pray for mercy. You let the Lord know, look, I know. I know the Lord shall be true. If Ronnie is dropping right. the party at the rest, what the hell is the average Jake going to do when he got to take off running? Right. And he got stickers and jabs on him, you know? <laughs> He's going to make it a quarter mile and pass out. Right. He's training weak. Yeah. The average 
that he may abide with you forever. Christ and another comfort. I'm gonna ask you, bro. What is the first comfort in that scripture? It says another comfort. I hate saying what, I don't want to give it away. Another comfort, the Holy Spirit. Right. First comfort. Right now, yeah, exactly. No, that's the point that we're getting at. So who's speaking? Do you know? No speaker right here? I was trying to read that first phrase again. Why are you defining him? Uh, St. John 14, 16. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comfort. Right. First comfort. Take, take the easiest guess in the world. Two. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Uh, uh, so uh, 5 and 31. And Yahweh shot answering said unto them, They that are old need not a physician, but they, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Yeah, and the righteous are comfortable. Yeah, I'm right, just got it, you know? I don't need your house shot. We got the laws, you know? It was us that needed it, though. Those are like foreigners. That's why he also blessed us. Uh, he blessed us those who, uh, who haven't seen it yet believe. Because like you said, you could chill. Hey, this is your house shot. We come from. We're serious. So no, it's time coming. These people are going to believe that I was, they can't even touch me or see me. Oh, look at that, too. That's why it happened.
runs everywhere and fought the sword, right? Like, what's going on? What's going to happen to me at that time? Solomon chapter 9, and we start with verse 17. In thy counsel, who have known except thou give wisdom and send the Holy Spirit from above? For so the ways of them which lived on the earth were reformed, and men were taught the things that are pleasing unto thee, and were saved through wisdom. Mm. And that came down by the Holy Spirit. And that's why Esau is the king of the He can't control the fact that he has acknowledged. Right. Oh, yeah. At least they understand, you know? Yeah. So like, it's not, it's 
Like I said, we fucked up over here, bro. You saw the number on us. The whole concept of death. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 and they sung a new song thou art worthy to take a book and to open the seals thereof for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to the most high by the blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and has made us unto our power kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth so what do we do without your house side sacrifice oh he's not a man to Thank you. 
prayed, Lord, please, and he just kept away. He didn't get his answer, and he's like, you know what? I do what I got to do right now. That's why you have to get that man in prayer. You got to pray. Let's jump back in. First Corinthians 1 and 19, for it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Right. And that's happening right now. You can't destroy the Holy Spirit, which means you can't destroy, destroy the knowledge that his man has. When he says that, that's pretty sad. With um, First Thessalonians 2. But as we were allowed the Howard to be put in Second Thessalonians 2 and 4. Who who opposed him exalt himself above all that is called the most high, or that is worship, so he has so that he has Yahweh sit up in the temple, Yahweh worship. Then should a wicked be revealed, whom the Lord should consume with the spirit of his mouth, and should destroy with the brains of his coming. Right. Right, brother, the spirit of his mouth. After you die, boom, what's that? Why he gave the hand? This word? Spirit of his mouth. Yes, you know why it's good? You, you take, like you said, uh, a good hypothetical guess because what's happening is you know, your brain is working right like now. And then you get the answer wrong, and then you hear it, it's like, oh, it's so amazing. That's why in high school, middle school, whatever, I always raise my hand. I just put it out to the floor. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Give the answer. What do you think, bro? Uh, the spirit of the mouth possibly be meaning uh, the way your tolerance coming in with the spirit and acknowledging the spirit comes out your mouth. So it depends on how much you observe. You're very close. One word. One word. One word. Uh, Matter of fact, I'm still talking. That's 
lines up, I believe that's what I read it for a second. That's what it was 2-8. This is Hosea chapter 6, verse 5. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as the as the light that goeth forth. Yeah, we do it one more time. God. Hosea verse 5. Therefore have I healed them by the prophets. I have slain them by the words of my mouth. And thy judgments are as the light that goeth forth. You do them? Slain them? Kill these things. That's what it says, basically, in a roundabout way. You know, through the words that help me call them, it's allowing us to speak. Not worth it like that. It's on our own words. The Lord is allowing us to say these things. He's allowing us to come out here and to chant battle on the great down to the ground. You got it, Yeah, I got one for you. So it takes power to slay the wicked elite and the rebels, the two third house of Israel. It's right here. The book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the reason why brothers say that having this knowledge is already a form of spiritual power. Uh, because something, you see, power basically is the essence of making something effectual make something go into work, right? Like, uh, a good example is, what was the house of Paris in the book of uh, Esther, right? When he put out that decree that you have to obey your man after his wife or his woman didn't come when he called, all he did was make a decree, and that shit would be power. It was effectual at that point moving forward, right? And that's what's happening right now by the Holy Spirit. The Lord is allowing us to speak his words, knowledge from the heaven, his mind, that's crazy when you think about it. That's why this the words are so powerful, especially it's making things happen on earth. And once again, like the law of attraction, right? You speak these things into existence. Very important why we have to come out here week after week after week. No matter what, be relentless. Even in 97 degree weather. One more to back up what Bashar is saying. Hosea 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets. I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets.
chapter 1, verse 20. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Hath not the Most High made foolish the wisdom of this world? Where so now we know how that happened. For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world. For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Verse twenty-one. For after that, in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. Yeah, because they have the wrong wisdom. Have the wrong knowledge. That's what's happening right now. You gotta remember, it's been generations and generations of us not knowing our nationality. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna say we're just calling ourselves black, but it didn't, it didn't even start there. We started off as first as niggers. That's what they called us, and they colored. And then all of a sudden, you yeah, have African Americans. Now, we're at the point where it's just, look, we're gonna call them a Crayola color. You're just black. That's all it is now. Like it's fucking. They're not even getting. They're not even you know, caring anymore about it. That's what's been happening for several hundred of years. You see? Now we're coming back to our true nationality. So a lot of people they don't know, and a lot of them don't even consider. Right? Are you good? <clears throat> Verse 21, for after that in the wisdom of the Most High, the world by wisdom knew not the Most High. It pleased the Most High by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Right, just like how to do go by in his car, roll down the window, blasting me, blasting me. Said it two, three times. He doesn't understand, of course, he just gave us a blessing at the end of the day. That's fine, completely fine. At this point, you know, I don't even feel anything when that happens. <laughs> Nah, I'm laughing, I'm laughing. Which is fine, you know? Yeah, he got marked. He said, for destruction, that's all that happened. But at the end of the day, he doesn't realize, the world doesn't realize, because they don't have this wisdom, that by doing it, by preaching, the Lord is looking at us and saying, by your actions and your faith, therefore, you're a person, a man that I'm going to save. I'm well pleased with that individual because they've been preaching. Therefore, I'm going to grant them the liberty. That's what's happening right now. The rest of the world doesn't know that. It's going to look foolish to them. Plus, we have certain knowledge that they don't have in general. Certain wisdom that they don't have. Foolishness. If they knew things that we know, they'd be out here doing the same exact thing. Because they don't know what we know, they're not doing the things that we're doing. See how that balance works out? And you got to keep that in your mind, no matter what anybody says or what they think. Mom, they laugh, shit like that. It's all right, you know what? He doesn't know what I know. I'ma let him. Uh, <laughs> Yo, he's gonna read it. God, precept, uh, this, uh, Psalm 34, I'll read verses 15 and 16. The eyes of Yahweh, by Shem Yahweh Shai, are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. The face of the Lord Yahweh is against them that do evil to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Righteous, he knows it. He knows what they're doing. He said it's going to cut them off from the face of the earth. That's going to happen not only to Esau, Edom, but in this time frame right now, two thirds of our people, they will be cut off and die. We read that in the book of 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter. That will happen, but guess what? That's a promise. Death is a promise to a lot of people living in this world right now. Just like life, everlasting salvation, a promise to the elect. A lot of you guys have been promised death the moment that you were in your mother's womb. And that's a fact. That's gonna happen. So knowing that, Jesus was a once again, we have to put in that. Oh, like, oh, white man, man. Fuck that white man. First, yes. First Corinthians chapter one and 22. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Then we preach Yahweh Shai crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. Right, because what we're preaching here requires faith. We're preaching something that requires faith. Think about it. We haven't seen Yahweh Shai in the flesh. But we're telling our people, look, 
name that you've been calling the Lord your entire life has been wrong. It's a lie. 20, 30, 40, 50 years, we've been calling this man Jesus, and that's not the case. This is the true name. It takes a, the Holy Spirit to be on you to alter your mindset to even be receptive to something so strong. A message that deep. Like, what? It only brings a shock to your body the first time you hear it. You know? Oh, you can't even speak to this stuff. What do you mean? You, you don't know what to say. You know what I'm talking about, what I'm saying. You just don't know. You don't understand it at first. Like, what? It's so different. You got to ask twice. What is it? I see. It's just foreign. It literally is foreign. It's foreign to our, our ears. Our brains don't have those receptors to understand that kind of pronunciation. It's a mouthful. Mark 1 and 1, for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue, have not the same force in them. Right. Why can't we translate it? There's a translation to it. Nah, there's no translation. That's his name from birth. That's what he was getting. I think I've said it before. I was younger. This lady told me, oh, your name is Andrew Brenda. I said, did you call me Brenda? I am not turning around. <laughs> I will not turn around. That is not my name. I wasn't given that. I was recognizing. No. Oh, you called me boom. You called him my name. Okay. You know, we were laughing. It's the same way. You go on and you win an award. They call a different name. You're going to sit there in the crowd. Who's that? Who's John No. You're looking around. Oh, wait, wait. That's me? And you get up. You're like, you confused as hell. No, that's not your name. And that, in fact, he says that in the book of Isaiah. Die on the cross. Get that in your mind. Read through it again. I just did it. Read through it again. Go through all of them. After 26, when he talks about his, his death, that sacrifice, all the pain that he went through. Because it wasn't just on the cross, his suffering started before. Get into it. Why would he give that glory to another person? He died in the cross and he called him Jesus Christ. I got it right here. Yeah, exactly where I'm at. That, that. That's the spirit. This is the book of John, chapter 17, verse 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I have with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now have they known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee. They have believed that thou didst send me. About that name, you have to give glory to literally Yahweh by Yahweh Shah. Even referring to think about it, the Exodus out of Egypt, it's so great, it's still even being talked about to this day, this very moment. You know? Movies are being made about it, plays, things like that, children's books. It's a great story. It's so great, the Lord even told Jeremiah to mention it again and let him know to tell us that there's going to be an even greater Exodus out of the new spiritual Egypt. But why would the Heavenly Father give that deliverance to another God? As a matter of fact, just for you to call him God. No, that's a title. He may be our God, he's our power, but he has a name. He's not gonna give that glory to another person. It ain't no way. Why do you think he has those main three high holy days which all Israel is to represent? There's a reason. Because that makes you remember what the Heavenly Father did for us. The names are very important. When you get the names by the Holy Spirit, and like the brother was reading in the prologue, I believe that was, it has a different course in the Hebrew. 
can't tell me, there's no way, you can't prove it, that Jesus means deliverance. It doesn't. It's not a translation, it's not a transliteration. It's a random word. We call it this no meaning. But when we say Yahweh Shai, that comes with a certain vibration. We know that that man is going to bring deliverance to our nation starting with the elect. A different force to it. Let's go back.
<laughs> it lost me. It lost it. Wounded angel. It hit the Appalachian Mountain. Esau was like, dip, 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 dip. <laughs> send somebody over there. And they got the arm. First know, aid. They got the arm of, of the angel. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. So it so has to make it seem as if he's in control of what's happening in the world right now. That's why it's coming out saying this thing. Now watch it. Look at Psalm. In the GNT. Psalms chapter 104, verse 3, and it reads, And built your home on the waters above. You use the clouds as your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. Verse 4, you use the winds as your messengers and flashes of lightning as your servants. Psalms 104, verse 4 in the G GNT, and it reads, You use the winds as your messengers and flashes of lightning as your servants. Itself, and a brightness was about it. Right. Yeah. 
uh, like you said, it's another first step going back into uh, second chapter, the second chapter. Remember, so the brightness of his coming. So this is describing the cherry of And out of the midst thereof, as the color of timber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had a likeness of a man, and everyone had four faces, and everyone had four wings, and their feet were straight feet, and their soul, their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. Chapter 11, verse 27. Yeah. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure, and in his end his deeds shall be discovered. Sirach 11, verse 27. Yeah. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure. Yeah. The affliction of one hour really going into a set amount of time. Because it could be your first few minutes in that concentration camp to be bugging in the Oh my gosh, got this crazy ass bullet. This nigga for a there's a gun in my head, like what is going on? Bueno. And then it makes you feel like you're inside a life and you're flashing through your eyes. That's going to happen to a lot of people without the hate for the money. So, Rock 11, verse 27. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure, and in his end his deeds shall be discovered. Yeah, a lot of people's deeds are being discovered now. Now, it's not specifically, but the fact that people just drop a dip and the juice is just, it's obvious that their deeds are wicked. But they just, they would know not to go to this man for help. You know, don't line up for this man to get any type of, uh, any type of rhythm. It's not a lot of work. Yeah, go ahead. 
in the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Yeah, the scripture says to use the world, not abuse the world. You knowingly, you, our people, they knowingly know what's good for them, what's going to benefit you. You can look up the health risks of different things, you know, and correlate it to the scriptures, but our people don't want to listen. So when you want to receive pity and mercy, you're not going to get it. Read it again. Second Ezra chapter 9, verse 9. Then shall they be in pitiful case. Yeah, pitiful case. Your organ, organ failure, cardiac arrest, mm. you know, uh, severe, severe bouts of depression, you know, sorrow coming upon you and you don't even know why you're waking up sad. You know, the power has been out for too long. You don't know what to do. These are going to kind of make you be in pitiful what are you going to do when you can't get to your bank account electronically? How are you going to purchase goods? How are you going to procure uh, substance? How are you going to provide for your family? That's what it means when the Lord says wow. you're going to be in a pitiful case. You're going to need some type of spiritual foundation. A lot of you don't have it. And we're providing it to you for free. We don't want your money. We don't want donations. We just want your ear. All right? And if you don't want to listen now, it's okay. You'll listen when you're in a concentration camp. You'll listen when transportation doesn't work no more. You know, when you, you wait for the bus, you, you ain't get the memo. You know what I'm saying? When the EMP is saying, and you're the last one to find out. Go ahead, brother. Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my way. Right, they've abused his way. You understand that the Lord has a Sabbath in place. He has certain things to govern our lives, to profit, uh, to profit us. And, and you go out of your way to be wicked. You know what I'm saying? You go out of your way to celebrate these holidays. Oh, it's for the kids. So the kids, that's why the scripture yeah. says, and kids rule over them. Yeah. So the holidays for the kids, now obviously that kid has power. Obviously that family, or that, that, that uh, congregation of the dead has power over you. And that shouldn't be so. Go ahead. And they have cast them away, despitefully shall dwell in torment. For such as in their life have received benefit. Yeah, dwell with torment. I mean, you gotta sit with that, man. It's not gonna be something that just happens real quick and then it's gone, and now you back to uh, enduring the tribulation easy or some shit. You know, it's gonna be continual things unfolding of confusion, man. You might have to deal with starvation while at the same time having to deal with cannibalism. It's like, yeah, I'm hungry, but if I go out, I know the Jeffersons might try to eat me. I used to be cool with the Jeffersons, but now the Jeffersons want to eat. And yeah, I saw the Jeffersons kill their dog the other day. They might try to kill me. There's the book of uh, Sirach 11 again. Now I'm going to verse 22. The blessing of Yahweh by Shiv Yahweh Shai is in the reward of the God. And suddenly he maketh his blessing to flourish. Say not what profit is there of my service, and what good things shall I have hereafter? Again, Say not I have enough and possess I say I not I have enough and possesses many things and what evil can come to me hereafter. Right, because a lot of our people they use the uh, the substance, they use carnal things to make it look like they're protected. Like they got like they got everything figured out. Right? But that's not the case. That's what the Lord is telling us right now. Well say these things. That's why Job prayed that special prayer, give me food convenient for me. That's that I become rich. And deny me, you know, or I become poor and try and steal or something. Okay. Verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. identify ourselves in these books that we read in the schools. 
it, you, it, uh, uh, which when they teach it, they don't even go into the intricate details. They don't tell you that uh, his name was Cristobal Colon. We know him as Christopher Columbus. I didn't know that he was Italian until I came into the truth. On top of that, an Italian rat. He was Italian J. So we, you, you got to get upset because of the, 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 the same J that was on the ship that brought your ass over here. So, but then it says, in the time of the affliction, there's a forgetfulness of prosperity. So when all hell breaks loose, you niggas gonna forget about shooting dice. Right. When all hell breaks loose, you gonna forget about handhanding. Right. You know, all these dear, that's all. This nigga riding by with a uh, brand new generator on the front of the bike, man. Right. Yeah, yeah, these niggas, you're not gonna, you're gonna forget all about bike share. And uh, what is it, capital uh, bike share. You're gonna forget all about this crap, man. Because it's convenient. You know, it's convenient. These conveniences are going to be taken away from you. You looking at us like we crazy. The so-called white man's got this in place for you. That's right. But you, you mad at us. But he's got these things written down. If you got a job, you're paying for these fucking things. That's right. These people have no idea, man. This is the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 9, verse 10. For such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. Right, have received benefits. If you get benefits from the 501c3, all right? You get so-called benefits. What's that scripture? Uh, you know where it is? It might be about 16. my law, while they had yet liberty, and when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but the spies did. Why? Because they despise Why? Because they've been blinded. You got benefits. You know, if you got a fucking wall of gifts and a, suit, a, a briefcase coming into your, to your door every day, you know what I'm saying, with $100,000, your ass ain't going to be out here doing the work. You know what I'm saying? Our elders and apostles, they still out there doing the work. Now, I'm not saying they got briefcases of money, but we pay our times. You know what I'm saying? The elders and apostles, they shouldn't have to pay rent, things like that. And hey, who knows if they're paying rent? But guess what? If they aren't, go out of your house by shot, because that's how it's supposed to be. They're worthy of their hire. But they're putting forth the greatest example in the spirit. And that's why we come out here every single week. It's a nice day. You know what I'm saying? We're young men. We could be doing anything. But what are we doing? Risking our lives in the face of our enemy while you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you walk around aimlessly just ready to be destroyed, man. And we're going to continue to be consistent while these other leaders continue to be inconsistent. Inconsistency leads to injury, man. You know, when you don't train a skill over and over again, like a language, if you were to travel to a country and your ass didn't prep for the language, if somebody says something to you, next thing you know, your organs could be getting shipped to a different country because your ass didn't study. You know what I'm saying? You didn't acquire the proper skill. That's what we tell you, man. Get the benefits of your Yahweh and Yahweh Shire and, and, and work on them. The hell with the benefits of this world. Like, that, like I said, that 501c3, there's benefits to You can protect them. If something were to happen to them and they went to court, they're going to bring that into uh, the, the evidence to help the defense. We got to use the answer to uh, 77. Oh, there's another video that's going on. Let's see, we got a... Uh, oh, I got Edwin's type video. And it's Ecclesiastes 77. Uh, it's Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. And you know, um, as y'all see, man, this uh, uh, captivity is a very oppressive, man. And again, like the Raj uh, said, we study to show us some proof to give an answer. And so, with this going on, man, it's, uh, it's more affecting us. We, we, we're going to 
understand the truth and we know what's going on. It's nothing but wickedness, wickedness first upon the earth, man. Okay, second earth is 15. Uh, what's that verse? It's somewhere at the top. Basically, that's, that's what we're going through, man. We want this place to be destroyed, man. Come. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression make up a wise man mad, and a gift destroys the heart. Come. Sirach chapter 20, verse 29. Presence and gift blind the eyes of the wise and stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. That's the one that I want. That's the detailed one. Read that one again. Come. Sirach 20, verse 29. Presence and gifts blind the eyes of the wise. Right, that bribery. You see it in all types of movies. When somebody knows that they're supposed to be doing right, and then somebody says, hey, I just want you to do this one thing for me. This is what's on the table. I promise you, this is all you have to do. Then what happens? They're in a never-ending cycle of having to do stuff for that person, which becomes what? Their hand work. That's what we're saying. These other groups, these other sects of Israel, they want the spirit of the so like that. These other sects of Israel, they're being controlled by hand work. Yeah, they're going to have the Esau uh, guy his hand up their ass, up their dress, pull the strings, man. Go ahead. And stop up his mouth that he cannot reprove. Right, that's why Nate doesn't go out anymore. That's why he doesn't speak on certain things. They cater their doctrine a certain, they speak a certain way. You know? They teach a certain way, man. They, they even smile a certain way. You know? It says, they, 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 and they open up, they stop up their mouths. So this well, you're supposed to be correcting the people. You know? You're supposed to be correcting the people. Now, they believe in hell. They believe in heaven. You go there forever. Believe in all these types of magic, man. It's completely off. This is the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 8. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, mm -hmm. and pervert the words of the righteous. Yeah, that's what this is in, the, in Exodus, which is the law. Read that one more time. This is Exodus 23 and 8. And thou shalt take no gift. For the gift blinded the wise. Right, for a gift blinded the wise. And I'm gonna find this little really where uh, uh, Sarnetta, he did a sit down with uh, Captain Cesario, and he was asking, he was drilled about that 501c3. And he said they had it so that they can, uh, uh, up under that, they would have to, uh, they could have their soup kitchen, you know, they could have the uh, funding for that. So they could uh, receive, uh, they could speak on the mic and personal the permit. And there's a few other things where he said it basically protects them. So you're relying on Esau's paperwork to protect them. But in Psalms 91, it says, I gave my angels charge over them. So you rather take Esau's charge over the angels' charge. John fell at the angels' feet, ready to worship the angels. So that's basically, you're falling at Esau's feet to worship him. It's a form of obesity, man. We are not obey the enemy. Esau's the enemy of the world. Back in return, you know? That's called virtue. 
So that's what these other sects and what a majority of our people they do when they sell out to this man in the in the in, the, in, the, uh, in Hollywood, man. They get certain gifts. They can, and Esau says, all right, this is your requirement. You know, put on this tutu and dance on stage, nigga. You know? It's time for your humiliation, you know? When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come onto us. Right, it says the, the overflowing scourge. Our people, they understand that Esau controls this place. He is that overflowing scourge. He was given the blessing of the dew of heaven and all of the earth, and he was going to rule with the sword. That's what a sword does, man. It brings that whip upon your back. He's going to bring that gun. He's going to bring that threat of death, man. That pale horse, the black horse, the red horse. It says they was going to take peace from the earth. Control the balances, turn everything upside down. That's what this man is doing. Our people, they can see it in the news, man. And they, 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 still, don't, they still don't act accordingly. Jake's still out here trending. Oh, the new thing is, is to act like an NPC and get paid for it. You just sit there and just bop around on uh, TikTok and different platforms and get paid hundreds of dollars. You just sit there looking like a, a Sims character, walking in circles, you know? But we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood, we hid ourselves. Yeah, they made lies our refuge. Oh, but that also goes into uh, the 501c3. That's not going to protect you from uh, spiritually from saying, I'm not going to take the MARK, the M -A -R -K, M -O -T -V. It's probably tied in. Who knows? That might be tied into that. Your congregation must adhere to the protocols of uh, uh, the World Economic Forum, or however they're going to roll it out. All right, because the elder archaeologist did a quick update, and they said he said they did a soft launch of the uh, Fed now. You know, and it's all going to be tied in to uh, CBDC and the World Economic Forum. And the CBDC, all right, and, and the way that you pay biometrics, that's so huge. They have, that has to be a full point on their uh, silicon. You know, the outline for uh, what they went over. This, uh, this is James chapter 2, goes hand in hand. Our faith is supposed to be in our Lord, Jehovah Shem Yahweh not the man of this earth. This is James 2, verse 1. My brethren, have not the faith of our Lord, Jehovah Shem the Lord of glory, with respect of persons. For if there comes into your assembly a man with a gold ring, in goodly apparel, and there come in also a poor man in vile raiment, and ye have respect to him that wear the gate holy, and say unto him, Sit thou here in a good place, and say to the poor, Stand thou there, or sit here under my footstool. Are ye not then partial in yourselves? the outward appearance when we've been brothers and things like, all right, what's this brother going through? What are some of the experiences, man? Is the, is the, is the, is the uh, function? Is it, is, it, is it communicating? Is he, is he engaging in the spirit? You know? It's not, oh, he's, oh, he already showed up with a beard. Oh, damn, he already got a nice garment. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he already knows how to bring out Deuteronomy 2868. Oh, come back next week and speak, brother. That's how they get down. What size you wear? Oh, a large? Oh, we got your shirt next week, brother. Yeah, that's not, that's not how it works. You know, you can be completely homeless. If you believe, we'll deal with you over a nigga who's completely rich with a fortune beard down to the ground. You know what I'm saying? Perfect diet, chiseled, you know? The, uh, all, you got all, all these women, kids in order. But no faith, no belief, you know? This thing, his actions are gonna deliver. And are become judges of evil thoughts. James 2 and 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom, which he hath promised to them that love him? James 2 and 5. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world? rich in faith and heirs of the kingdom. Yeah, I'd like to see some of those on the uh, break this down, you know? The poor of this world, you know, they would, they would immediately go to the spiritual sense. 
But hey, our people as a whole, we are poor, man. You know? We're so, uh, if we had money, we would have a seat at the EU. We would say uh, Judah, the so called Negroes, with a precept next to it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Simeon, uh, the so called Dominicans, with a precept to it and, and with a link to the, to the breakdown. Yeah, yeah, it'll, it'll be a website for each person. Genesis 49. Yeah, 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 Genesis 49. Yes, sir. Genesis 49 at the EU. Imagine that. Esau would never allow that, man. Go ahead. And he hath promised to them that love him, but he hath despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you. If it starts getting crazy, we don't go for so much lives at the end. This is James 2 and 6. But he hath despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you and draw you before the judgment seats. Yeah, because we've got to be some kind of starter shit, you know, with these other groups. I don't know what it is, what the B is, but there's got to be, there's got to be some type of education or a contract that has to be signed. You know, I, I, I believe, maybe it'll come out, but I personally believe that IUIC, they have NDAAs in effect. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 NDAAs, a non-disclosure agreement. You know, in effect. That's why when somebody leaves, they only do like one or two videos. Then you don't hear about here for the first time. You know, I don't know what's going on. What's up with that? You know, yeah. if somebody leaves Great Millstone, them niggas going for at least three, six months. You know, talking shit. You know what I'm saying? You know, the, the non disclosure agreement is what you how about me out shy. And that is not catch your pearls before swine. That's it. All right? And it's interesting you say that, Raj, because you notice how you are see, they still calling on Jesus Christ. That is that is the oppressor, the ultimate false God in life. This is James 2 and 7. Do not they blaspheme that worthy name by the which ye are called. If ye fulfill the royal law according to the scriptures, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Ye do well. But if ye respect the persons, he commits sin. Right. One, uh, like we were going in before, one way to respect the person is accepting gifts, man. Mm -hmm. And the gift can come in, in a different gift in many forms. I'm pretty sure within these other sects, they handed out uh, some type of gift to keep them in. But one of it is women. A lot of them niggas, they went, they went from the Christian church to IUIC because there's more bitches in IUIC. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this is, this is a different type of Israelite woman. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll take a purple shirt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'll take a purple shirt. Maybe we also tell the woman that they can make the correct men. Oh, yeah. That's hard. That's hard. Hey, you got to go to the shop, man. Go to the brother. You might check on them. They'll make a move on it, man. Where's Zion all that? See that too? Okay, cut. Walk. Walk. Go ahead. This is James 2 and 10. Okay. For whosoever shall keep the whole law. Hey, that's what it says. When the day of the Lord shall be uh, dark and gloomy. All the Lord's got to do this. He don't even have to send a storm. Imagine continuous days like this. A lot of people, and you see a lot of people get in their cars from suicide, man. Go ahead. Go back to the time. This is uh, First Corinthians chapter 3, starting off at verse 1. And I, brethren, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Amashiach. I have fed you with milk, and not with meat. For here to the, ye were not able to bear it, neither ye are able, suck you, ye are not, you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and division, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Right, read uh, that one more time. Come on, yeah, we don't follow. All right, 1 Corinthians 3, uh, 3 verse 3 from the top. Okay, so okay. I can check 3 from the top. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you so, as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes and Amashiach. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here too ye are not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able, for ye are. For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you. Yeah, that's why a lot of those guys, those other groups, they'll never get the breakdown. 
minded is death, uh -huh. but to be spiritually minded is life right. and peace. Right, so we're going to stay in the spirit and you can stay carnal, all right, and we're going to stay in the spirit and keep our peace in our life in Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. So we're going to punch our hot and give our praises to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, 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 Hashem Yahweh Shai